is disgusting things. Right near um, housing. A tower of evil, pure wickedness and mammon. The all seeing eye. Little 3G stuff and equipped to be upgraded and add uh, new stuff onto it and uh, all sorts you can put on these towers. But it's too depressing to uh, think about in these end times, in these uh, last days, approaching the wrath of God. Anyway, I wanted to record that. You see the houses. the tree right on a big new housing estate I'd hate to be living in there anyway well I'm gonna begin uh, my testimony today I'm cycling to where I used to live so on the way I'm gonna give some testimony I've just um, my way's been blocked so I'm gonna have to go the long way around and uh, it jammed it jammed my card I, I believe it just said uh, I can get any access to my camera so uh, I've moved on and it's okay now. So I wanted to start. Hopefully uh, it picks up my voice okay while I cycle. And I just wanted to give some testimony for um, encouragement and uh, to glorify the Lord and um, how he's emboldened me, how he's... Um, reaffirmed he's trustworthy and faithful throughout my life from the beginning from that first moment I was saved and I want to share a bit about my difficulties my old man my old nature and how he's taught me through the lessons I've learned and uh, how he's faithfully rescued me delivered me from falling into transgression as a, a baby into the Mormon cult and which was like being sucked through a carburetor into a broken engine and I ended up in the sump and you know it took me um, took me a lot of growth and a lot of study and a lot of uh, promptings by the Holy Spirit to deliver me out of that cesspit and uh, praise God he he done that alone without any hands and then, then I came across the Christian body because this was in the time where there was no internet, there was no Christians that I knew. And um, when I was first saved, the Holy Spirit um, just taught me that, um, you know, stay away from religion and trust the Holy Spirit, the still small voice basically explained and told my soul that they're all they're all um, apostate and, and to avoid these people and so I thought well where's the body of believers where's the church the ch you know and I had this um, concept that um, you know that Christians gathered I knew that Christians would gather and break bread and I've still yet to uh, <laughs> sit with believers and break bread I've, I've only ever broken bread on my own when I've when I felt um, when I've been worthy enough and when I, when I've fallen back into the old man it's something I've avoided to do it's just so I want to speak about addictions and repentance um, now when I fell away it, Satan was all over me it's like the end of the world and I was going to hell and I didn't know how to recover myself. I felt so ashamed, and 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 I didn't know how to get back up. And um, I had no no one to take me under their wing and share their testimony. You get thrashed in the Christian body, uh, perhaps by apostates or people who are a bit too self-righteous. So it took me many years to find. Uh, some humble brethren and, and thank the Lord I prayed and he led me to where all these different ministries here and there where who were speaking the word and speaking in love and speaking honestly and soberly which I'm very grateful for and I'll um, 
you know, I, 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 I look up to these bro brothers and um, as, as we're commanded to look up to all, each other. So I'm hoping my testimony is going to perhaps embolden someone who's a bit weak, who struggles with addiction. And as you can tell, <laughs> I'm out of breath. I'm really unfit. Um, so uh, repentance. Um, now where I'm going is, is an experience I had in my childhood. And um, it, it was the first, the first experience I had of post-traumatic stress uh, repercussion, shock waves, if you like. And it was um, approaching that I had to go into school and it was really worrying me. I lived on um, a dysfunctional council estate. I saw a lot of sin, uh, a lot of criminality, a lot of violence. I used to have to run everywhere. You get sticked and stoned. I, I was kidnapped, uh, all sorts. And, I, and I, as I'm going, I'm, I'm remembering all, all, all the horrible things, my um, wretched, wicked, sinful heart, my rebellion. And, um, and how that grieved me when I um, done those things I didn't want to do, but naturally I'd done them anyway. So um, I want to speak a bit about repentance and uh, the definition of what that means, truly. Um, because um, you can go through life with... Um, I'm going to pause here. Oh well, that didn't work. They weren't interested. Anyway, I want to talk about um, repentance, and um, you know, we uh, many people in life without Jesus Christ do something, and they feel remorse, and that is, uh, and, they, and, and they say, "Oh, I'll never do that again." And and what confused me of my testimony, and why I felt, oh, I'll keep my sins to myself because I don't want to get beaten by people. And I just keep them to myself and the Lord and confess them to the Lord. And I won't tell people that I've, I have an addiction or I drink or I struggle with drink, I struggle with smoking. And, and these things, I'm on, I'm right on that threshold of, um, you know, them being out of my life forever, thank God. So I'm praying and we're going in faith today that I can uh, keep going forward. And um, I want to talk about... Uh, just a caution about people thinking of going into getting help from other people, uh, like the 12-step program, etc. And I, I would just caution people to uh, avoid those places unless, you know, unless the Lord prompts you or guides you in in these areas. It's not for me to say where you should and shouldn't go. That's your your free agency. But I've been to these 12-step programs. They're uh, law. They're lawful to start with. They, they, they bring you back to the law do this, do that, blah, 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 blah. And really, the only, there's only one step program, and that's faith alone in Christ alone, as you, you were at the beginning. And God is faithful for anyone with addiction or pain or suffering to complete that which he started. So that, this is going to be my testimony today of those experience and a bit about my childhood and um, repentance. Um, fruits of repentance. Just got to cross the road here. Private military road. Oh, private road, MOD, pass holders, access only. Well, that's for cars, I imagine. So, um, repentance. Uh, repentance simply means a change of mind. You come to the come to the throne of grace, to the cross, or to, to your knees, and you believe. Um, I was saved by needing, to, needing love, needing to know that uh, God loved me. I believed in God, I believed in Jesus. And it, it was actually a counsellor uh, who gave his testimony of Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ, but I didn't know at the time he was a Mormon. He was a Mormon high priest and he was, he was on the end of grooming me. And uh, the, the Lord delivered me away from the, the Mormon doctrine before I was saved. And then I fell into the church because this, this device was set up around me. And I went, um, 
I've given my testimony already. I, I just went went out one night, said, Lord, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. Do you love me? And that's when I was born again, instantly. And that's when the work began. Now, all on the way to that journey, I was going, the Holy Ghost was, it's a bit like surfing. And I was surfing on the Spirit. The Spirit was leading me to change my life, to feel remorse for my sins. But I didn't say, oh Lord, um, forgive me of my sins. I knew I was a sinner. I didn't need anyone to tell me because the Holy Spirit was leading me to that point, drawing me to the cross. And so the work began then. It was only then that I give up smoking and by the power of the Holy Spirit, being whole and, and having that desire to continue in that walk. And then I fell down and smoked and then I got back up again and the Lord restored me. But then I got caught in Mormonism and things started to go sour and then I fell despondent into sin and that's when I had the problems of getting back on my feet. Because um, recovery from addiction is all about the environment you're in and putting your trust solely in Jesus Christ, not in mankind. Um, there may be people in the world that can um, edify you here and there, but you can't fully trust on them to help you. You can only really trust in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so, once you're saved, if you're struggling with a um, serious wound, addiction problem, uh, anything like that you're trying to overcome, uh, you, can, you want to trust the Lord. And it's one step at a time. And to seek, seek to um, overcome those things and go uh, day to day, confessing your sins and, and putting them off. And if you fall down, to get back up and to start again. Not to live for those sins um, or justify those sins, but if you have those sins, you may not be able to give them up in one go. You may have to give them up in stages. You may have to take one step at a time or you may be able to take off the whole bite. I, I can't speak individually. It's, uh, it's very personal between that person and the Lord. So I just want to encourage people to um, don't give up hope and keep your eye on getting those things out of your life because they won't do you any good. Uh, they've ruined your life. And you never make up what you've lost. You can't, you, you can't go and do good works to uh, repair the damage you've done to yourself and others and the Lord. So you can only start back at uh, the first base, which is the cross. Faith alone in Christ alone. Right. And he will, he's faithful, he is faithful, um, and, I, and, I, and you grow in that trust as the Lord. If you put your trust in the Lord, he will reveal how faithful he is. But if you turn aside and give up, uh, or get whipped and throw the towel in, uh, You've turned aside from trusting in the Lord. And I, I've been guilty of that many times for being despondent, but I've never taken my eye off what, what that experience I had in the first. So I'm going to leave it for there for now and um, get to my destination and continue my testimony. And I'll close in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <laughs> the heavens have opened. Uh, I just wanted, I'm halfway there and I just wanted to carry on my testimony and perhaps give a, some sober warning to any brother and sister who is perhaps caught in transgression or thinks it's alright to sin, to tempt the Lord. Uh, the Lord will punish his saints. He does chastise the ones he loves. And there is, if you're not aware, there is a danger of you being carrying on onto death and the Lord will destroy you. And I just want to encourage people not to 
take your eye off the, the high prize, the salvation that you've been received because Jesus is faithful. That's not something I've ever strove to do, return to sin. Um, but in my transgression and weakness and having lots of serious problems, the Lord's been merciful and he's, he's taught me through these and hopefully I can go on to share, share my testimony to embolden people, to encourage people to go beyond what I could ever do. Um, I'm limited and not to fear what other people think, but to trust in the Lord, carry on going and rejoice. Uh, <laughs> I love this weather, I love uh, going out giving gospel tracts and uh, I, I want to encourage people uh, to go out and share the gospel, it's the most wonderful experience. Uh, I've just had a few witnesses and uh, lots of hard people, I met a, 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 a born again Christian walking in the woods and we had a quick conversation and exchanged a few words. It's a wonderful experience, there's nothing like it and the Lord is with us wherever we go, even in our sin. He's there on the sidelines waiting for us to recover ourselves. And, he's, he, you know, and we have saints praying over us. And I couldn't have carried on going without other, my brothers and sisters. Having brothers and sisters as examples and also having brothers and sisters um, praying for me. So I'd like to thank my brothers and sisters and for all those pray that have been praying for me and encouraging me to carry on going. I pray the Lord anoints you this very hour he blesses you, fills your heart with joy and keeps you steadfast and especially those who are strong in the faith, mature in the faith, I pray that uh, you don't stumble and you don't fall and you, you remain a blessing not only to weak Christians like myself but also the lost souls in the world. Um, you can, there's a scripture that comes to mind where you know uh, come to a point in your Christian walk where you will not fall down but you've got to be careful to not think you're not you're, you, you still can fall down and that and I feel that that's where the Lord's I'm on that um, coming over the peak of the hill of that um, walk in my life that that work that the Lord's finished is uh, being realized so I'm going to close there in the name of Jesus Christ Amen Well, here I am, my destination. Oh, praise the Lord. I just met this lady, and she rebuffed me at first. And uh, well, I was walking along with her, because we was in an alleyway. <laughs> and uh, she's telling me about her personal kind of faith. And that opened the door. She asked me where I was going. I told her why I was coming. I told her I had an opportunity to plant some seeds. Her name's Katie. so. I'd ask you to pray for Katie and encourage her to continue. We spoke about religion and the gospel, the falling away and faith alone in Christ alone. And we parted, so that was a wonderful experience I didn't expect at all. So I'm at my destination, this is where I grew up as a child, it's my first home. Uh, I woke up one morning, I was four, uh, about four and I collapsed having post-traumatic stress disorder from uh, violent abuse but no memory of it and I fell to my knees, I'm going to fill my house um, uh, this is our, my old place I lived in the middle house on the, what, near the blue car now this was all grass it was a little play park like the uh, one down the road there in the next place it's all green and I fell to my knees and I cried out, my spirit cried out and I was encompassed like sanctification and I've always, want, looking back, I've always wondered, well, uh, was, you know, was, was that because I was in, in desperate need, is that because I was uh, one of the seed, one of the children of Israel and I was over, uh, just completed in this wonderful peace and joy and uh, I didn't know it was Jesus, it was, I just knew that this consciousness was the Almighty and I felt so much love I didn't want to leave and uh, the Lord was reassuring me and uh, that I would, have to, I would have to go to school and I, I was afraid, because I'd experienced so much sin in my, uh, my child 
in my surroundings, it, it was troubling me and that was what was triggering the trauma. And the Lord encompassed me and comforted me and, exp and by the still small voice, by the Holy Spirit, and by the Lord, he was right by my side. Looking back, he was right down at my side. And he said, he told me that I'd have to go forward and I would sin and I'd lose that feeling. And I didn't want to leave it. And I did, I fell away into sin. And when I repented, and repentance is an about turn, and I saw the name of that God out. And when I called on, Heavenly Father, in the name of the blessed Lord Jesus Christ, I had exactly the same experience. But the difference was, it was in my heart forever. It was, I was justified by what he'd done on the cross and his death, burial and resurrection. And I knew that that was God when I was a child. And I never, I'd never let go of that experience. So I wanted to include that in my testimony, that, that this is the beginnings of my repentance. And the Lord showed me by my own understanding and our local swimming paths. It was shallow at the, uh, on, on, on the left and it went into the diving area like a shallow slope and into a deep trench. And then on the other side it was exactly the opposite and it come out and then went back to the shallow end at the other end length of the pool. And, he, and that, that's what he showed me, to my heart and mind, speaking to my spirit by his, his omnipotence, his omnipresence. And he revealed that, you know, that would be like my walk, that I would sin, and this world is lost in sin. You know, and I, and I look back and think of the horrible, wicked things I've done, but also that desire to repent, but not knowing where to go, where to put my faith. So I'd like to encourage people, people that have not believed that uh, Jesus Christ died to save all sinners. He loved the world and he is outstretched. You just have faith in him alone. He will answer your prayer. He will come and into your life, into your heart and save you. And he will never leave you from that day forward. And wherever you go, wherever you stray, he will wade out and get you and bring you back. I'm going to close her in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I'm just going to cycle down the hill and I'm going to post some uh, gospel tracks in the flats. So I've, I've returned here in the past and uh, tracked this area, but I wanted to come back and do the flats. So I'm going to just cycle down the hill, film it, and that'll be the end. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless. Well, that's the end of me, um, my excursion for today. I'm going to get back home and get something to eat. Um, please play, pray for the gospel tracks I've delivered and posted. Um, I'm quite grateful that I was able to do more than I expected. Had a few conversations on the street. Um, a couple of young lads having a joint, so I was able to Bear, their t uh, bear testimony, give them a gospel track. So please pray, pray for the, the, these young men that they may come to know the Lord uh, rather than religion by, the, by themselves and uh, they won't miss out on the free gift of eternal life and the blessings it brings in, in your life now and forever. And also to any brother and sister who who is not, who's, um, feels a bit f fearful of sharing the gospel, a bit not very confident, is um, I, I don't believe that people are ashamed so much. They're perhaps a bit um, in, uh, not very confident in going out and sharing their testimony or posting tracks. So um, I would, I would uh, give a, a warning, a caution to, to if you're single going out on your own is to always go out fearfully I don't mean being afraid but praying before you go that the Lord will walk with you you're not doing it off. you're not doing it like you're waking up in the morning and you're just getting grabbing your keys and getting into the car and driving off into the traffic I mean um, you know 
step back and have a prayer and the Lord will walk for, with you and bless you and uh, you'll, you'll rejoice and um, have a wonderful experience. So if that's an encourage, encouragement to anyone, I'd encourage people to uh, share their testimony because you don't know these experiences until you go out in faith. And I remember when I first was saved, I, I just went out with a question air, you know, what do you think of this world? Do you think of, that there's a God? What do you think about religion? And I'd have a few questions and then that would open up um, a dialogue and then you could share your testimony, how you were saved just by believing in Jesus and and, and on you go. And um, I don't do that anymore. I, I, I tend to just post tracks and it, it's overwhelming. There's so, there's so many houses and I think, oh, I'm never going to cover all this. But um, I don't let that put me off. I, I do what I can and I don't always... I just go randomly and uh, post them through the letterbox. So please pray for my the tracks I've posted and all the gospel tracks posted by all the saints. Um, so I'm going to leave it there and get back on my bike and head off home. And I'm close there in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank God and praise the Lord that I had a, a great day. And I just got back and I want to just, you have to excuse me, I'm, I just got back and I'm hot and sweaty. I hate sweaty. And I've still got a fever, I've still got a temperature. Uh, my legs are weak. <laughs> Why, my mind. I've just got back and I want to just complete off, finish off my testimony. And uh, on the way back, I'm sharing just a, an experience which I hope will uh, instill some confidence in people who perhaps not, not very confident in sharing the gospel. On the way back I went back through the woods and I had one gospel track left in my bag and uh, I saw this man up a track, I got a bit lost because it looked like the ground since I was a child so I had to work, find my way back and it was all builders and it was all boggy and I saw this man walking his dog and I felt a prompting to turned round and go in. I passed the road that he was walking up and I felt prompting to go round and go and witness it, see if it shared, you know, accept a gospel tract and I could bear my testimony. And I thought, oh, I'm so tired, I just want to get home. And then I, I, I was just humming and hurrying and I thought, no, I'll go, the, I'll go the extra mile. And I turned round, got to this man, he's walking his dog, Offered him the gospel tract, he wasn't interested, so, okay, fair, fair play. If you don't want to know, you don't want to know. And uh, asked him the time and proceeded on. And and then I got to the alley which leads me out of the woods into my estate, housing estate or the, the area where I live. And there's this, this lovely gentleman, uh, a guy with a big wheelbarrow of all this fishing gear, he didn't want. He didn't want to know. And then this ge dear gentleman, and I offered it. I stopped and we talked, and I gave my testimony about the uh, faith alone in Christ alone, and how I became, how the Lord answered my prayers, the faithful assurity of the, the resurrection and the free gift of eternal life. And uh, I gave him a gospel gospel tract. He was. It, he, he was oh. Could, you sure I can keep it? And it was, it was just a photocopy testimony. I said, oh, absolutely. I, and uh, explained that I'd just print, get them printed and share them and go out and share my testimony. And he's excited to, pleased to receive it. And um, and he said he'd go home and read it that night. So I uh, praise the Lord. And uh, that's just like a one of the experiences I've experienced before you have so much rejection and then you meet somebody like that and it, it almost feels like a, um, a cherry really you, the Lord gives you a cherry and that was a, to me a cherry experience to open that door to share the love of Jesus and Heavenly Father with this this gentleman so please pray for this uh, elderly man um, I didn't have ch chance to um, introduce ourselves I did just slip my mind and uh, and I and I pray and hope that um, that he will be saved so please pray for this uh, gentleman I, I don't know his name um, but I pray that he 
he, he comes to Fife and, and the, the Lord will, I'm praying that the Lord will hold him up until, until he, um, until he, he does that. And um, I pray that that man will be saved and know for himself and then have a testimony and, and also his loved ones and family. So that was just one of the sort of experiences that, um, that will come your way. And uh, I'm so grateful for that. I, I, I don't go out. Every, I haven't been out every day. I, I'm, I haven't, you know, um, I'm injured and I've got difficulties, and sometimes I just can't go out. So it's one of the opportunities today that I, you know, I put some time aside and uh, was able to go out and have a good excursion. And, uh, and so, uh, please pray for the for the gospel tracks I did hand out. And I, I hope that that's an encouragement for somebody. I just want to clarify, I've got this rope in the garden, and this is an art I brought for my dog, but it was treated, so I didn't, didn't let him play with it. And I, I just wanted to share about repentance, about the, the atonement of Jesus Christ. I'm going to use this rope as an analogy. It's just a bit of rope with two knots in, a bit of hemp hole rope. Now, if we, if we look at like the frayed ends of that, it's like the fall of man and then there's, you know, nobody can p repair it, it's damaged now, you can't you can't put it back into a a nice piece like that, only Jesus has restored all those loose ends, all, all those frayed ends and he's put it right because he's the author and finisher, he's the beginning and the end so if we look at our life, every one, every one of our sinful lives because of the sins of a uh, fall of mankind, that we inherit sin, so we're at each one of these frayed ends until we're saved, until we're, until we're restored, which is an eternal restoration. Only Jesus Christ could put everything right and pay the price, and, and so we've got an, a fresh, brand new start, a new life, and, and his life is constantly, it's eternal, and it's forever, it's, there's no no time, he's outside of time, so he's now, he is, and 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 I had the opportunity to share that um, testimony today, and um, that's why I wanted to go to where I was a child, when I uh, was first comforted by the Lord, but I hadn't received the Lord, I didn't know his name, I didn't know who he was, and, and that, through my life, and through sin, and then realising, you know, I, I, I didn't, I, that I was a horrible sinner, and that I couldn't put it right, and, and that turned my life around um, after some tragic experiences in my life I wanted to return to that experience so I sought out God, I sought out well who is, and, and the only God I knew of was Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father I remember when I was in the junior school uh, headmaster used to preach the gospel or teach the Old Testament so I had a little bits in me uh, bits about the Gospel of John and Luke. At the uh, he used to do uh, read, to give sermons at Christmas and Easter, and I was so rebellious, but I, uh, you know, I, I must have taken it in, and uh, I had a turnaround. So that I want to complete my testimony that uh, repentance is just simply a change of mind, and it's the Lord that draws you unto the cross, and it and and what draws you unto the cross is your willingness to seek. So when you start seeking, the Holy Spirit will change you, it will lead you, and it will bring you unto repentance. And, and, but that, that begins when you're saved, when you, when you call upon the Lord, that's when the fruit comes, because he imputes his righteousness, and then you live, then, then you, you um, continue on in that righteousness, and any weaknesses you, you carry with you, the Lord will is work them out, because he's given you the completeness. But you may stumble back into sin, and, and, and if you don't realise that we've got dual natures, and that we have an advocate with the Father, who's Jesus Christ, if you look at John 1, you know, he who says he has no sin is, is calling God a liar, and the truth's not in them. But if we confess our sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, and he's faithful to forgive us of all sins. That, and we receive the forgiveness of all sins at, at the first. So he, he restores us back to that completeness on our daily walk. But if we turn aside, we, we will continue on in error or transgression. So I want to um, just encourage people that if you're battling with an addiction, 
you're a battling with uh, sin um, it's just to keep going not to give up and you and, and I can't say when and how you're going to overcome all your sins and I, I've struggled with weakness and gone out and and had give gospel tracts and and the Lord's walked with me he's blessed me and that's helped me that's where the Lord's working in my life to help me overcome these things I've not been able to just give it all up in one go since I've um, since I um, fell away and uh, and then got I couldn't get back up on my own strength and the Lord's restored me every time I'm I'm faithful and I confess my sins and I carry on and it's the Lord who works through our lives and it's only the Lord who knows it, the complete, the, the whole rope. It's only the Lord that has been in your shoes. The Lord Jesus has walked in everyone's shoes. He's tried them on. He's suffered all our lives. He's um, comprehended all our lives completely. And he's faithful to restore us to that of renewing, that completeness every day. But if we battle or beating ourselves or remaining in our sins, he cannot help us. So we will... We're missing out on, on the blessings. So um, I don't want to say it's okay to sin and it's okay to, um, you, you know, do things, continue on in, in sinning and live the gospel. But it, it's a personal walk and it's something that you, I believe you've got to work out yourself. You've got to overcome it. And only Jesus Christ understands and what I've learned in my walk, when you're very traumatised as a child, and this is, doesn't justify your sin, because the Lord's not a respecter of persons. He will chastise anybody. It doesn't matter how weak and feeble they are. But he's, he's merciful, and he'll he, uh, he chastise you in a way which will be appropriate to your circumstances. I can't, I can't dish that, that out, nor can any other brother and sister. That's the, the Holy Spirit convicts. The Holy Spirit does the work, um, and the Lord gives the increase. All we, we are as servants; we don't counsel the Lord on what you know what people should do. We we just have His word, and we can only go by His word. But you can judge people and say, "Look, that's sinful," but you you can't really understand what that person's going through. But you can judge by the word, the Holy Word. So sin is wrong, uh, addiction is wrong, drinking is wrong, homosexuality is wrong, sexual sins are wrong. Every, every sinner, every believer knows this. So if you are battling with an addiction, I just want to say don't beat yourself. Um, trust the Lord, confess your sins and, and allow him to do the work within you. That's where I am and I'm... I'm conquering you know I'm going forward and I'm making progress so I'm not going to let anyone interrupt that anymore and I'm just going to keep going and press on and I know that the Lord's faithful he's shown me he's faithful and he will he will complete that which has started and I will um, come to a point in my walk where these fun things won't be in my life anymore but the addiction and, the, and, and my flesh and my wounding my trauma and things that trigger my trauma and my, my nerves will always be there. And I may very well fall down and drink. I may very well fall into temptation. I pray not. Um, I'm hoping that once I've um, gone a long time about doing these things and I've built up my uh, faith and, um, you know, grown, because if you stop doing it, you, you can shrink, you can, uh, you know, lose muscle weight. Like, you know, I've been... I've been really ill and you know and you lose you lose your body weight and um, it's like it's like faith it's like a heart muscle it, it needs to be beaten for it to remain you need exercise to keep it healthy and and strong and that's like our faith so not to um, cast aside Jesus because you're stuck in addiction but to you know press on and uh, allow the Lord and uh, I wanted to express that um, environment um, is, is very important because um, if you're uh, transgressing or you're compromised in some way and you're living in an environment, that's going to affect your well-being. That's going to make it more difficult to conquer your whatever your sins or addictions are. And um, that that's key, I believe, is, is having a peaceful environment where you can grow in your faith 
and rather than sitting in your sin bin, sitting in the pit of sin and not and giving up kind of thing, thinking, Oh, I'll never I'll never be able to do this and the truth is you'll never you won't be able to do it, it's the Lord's job to do that. So um it, you know, there's certain things that are a real no no, like um homosexuality, sexual sins, um I'm not talking so much about masturbation but I, I, I which is a serious sin. But but um I would say um you know, being promiscuous, being adultery, for instance, these are really, you can't share the gospel and be participating in that. That's not something that you can struggle with. You, you're doing that and you know what you're doing and you've chosen to remain in that. So that would that needs to be repented of and stopped and, and to not do that anymore. But when it comes to things like addiction, like smoking, whatever your addiction is, these things aren't so easy. Uh, these things uh, aren't so easy to just throw away, and, and and some some people it is. Some people can just conquer things um, just like that. But with people with very serious difficulties, it can be a hindrance. So I want to encourage those people not not to throw the town in, and continue in your faith and sharing the gospel and and doing those things that you know that are right and that bless your life, uh, but not to justify your sins as being okay but to work that out with your lord to confess your sins to confess your weakness to be honest you don't have to confess your sins to the church body you confess your faults you your relationships with jesus jesus has paid you for your sins i haven't paid for your sins pastor a and pastor b and teacher a and teacher b hasn't paid for sins they just know what what the Lord's will is, what the Lord's heart, mind, and will is for all for all believers, and that's to receive the kingdom blessing, to overcome these things that that have been overcome for us, that we can get the victory, and enter into the uh, the kingdom, the promised blessings of the millennial kingdom. <coughs> you know, not not heaven, not 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 to our salvation. Our our salvation's a done deal. Once we've appropriated atonement, you you're safe forever and you won't lose that but what you will lose out and miss out on is the blessings of what you what the lord has planned for you he has he has something wonderful in your life for his glory it's his work it's not your work you're just sharing you're having a ride and you can't pair arm better than this person that person's doing more or less than me we don't see the whole picture the lord's given us each a portion we should be grateful for our portion the portion and lot we've had been given in life and just to experience that abundance of life no matter what how big or little it is how much responsibility we've got or how big that responsibility is and or how uh lesson you know not so much you know we, we should be grateful and we don't see the end what what part that our part was going to play so it's to be faithful in trusting in the lord to help him to you know to allow him to uh, you know fulfill his promise for his glory for his mercy's sake for his kingdom so i want to close there um encourage people to as, as i was a, a weak person is to share the gospel and uh you know put those things that uh those sins that easily beset us behind us and I, uh, I request uh, my brothers and sisters' prayers. I'm grateful for any prayers. And um, you know, I pray for my brothers and sisters, uh, the ones I come across who've, who've had tragic lives and they're beating themselves up because they're, you know, they're um, struggling with uh, addiction. It, it's one of the most horrible things to be caught in. And once you slip back into it, it's so difficult to get out. And it is such a... It can lead you into real dangerous water, and I know, and, I, and the Lord's brought me back from those dangerous waters. You know, thanks to God, He's faithful. Uh, read um, Ezekiel 34, you know, and look at that in a New Testament context of how the Lord, you know, loves His sheep. He He knows His sheep, and He He's mindful of them, even even in those times where we ha there's not been faithful elders on the earth who've who 
who've fattened themselves and they've neglected the weak and the poor. The Lord never forsakes the poor and the frail, the widows and the children. He's always mindful. And he, when there's no one else to help, he, he's faithful. He, it's his church, it's his body, and he looks after his own. So I'd like to close there, and I'd like to uh, ask Heavenly Father that uh, this is a blessing to people. This will be a lift. This will lift people up who are struggling to go forward in faith, share the gospel. And I'm going to close there and ask in the name of our beloved Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.